Hello Enchanted Ones, and a blessed Beltane to you all. Today, join me as I share with you my preparations, DIYs and rituals, including a very special ritual which you can follow along with me at the end of the video. But first, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and like if you'd like to see more content like this. But for now, sit back, relax and step into the enchanted woods with me. Beltane marks the middle of spring. It is a time where there is an abundance of new life and fertility in the air. The forest now is full of sounds, sights and smells and is a delight for the senses. Celebrating this time of year can be as simple or complex as you like and I am starting my celebrations by simply being outside and today I journey back to my fairy island and well it looks a little different from a few months ago and by different I mean it looks like a fairy flower paradise. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to Fairy Island. I've been watching this place grow for the past two months and it's just been an amazing experience watching the sprouts start to grow and then a couple of flowers until now when there are thousands upon thousands of flowers. I just love watching the whole forest evolve this time of year. It's just an amazing experience, but I love it here. It feels like it's my own private secret garden. It's just absolutely stunning. When we think about Beltane at this time of year, I think about the delicate stems, the new flowers, the very tender, soft leaves growing on the trees. Everything is still in its newborn state and that very much symbolises the fertility and the animals this time of year too. But it makes me want to help the forest. I like to do a little ritual when I come out into the woods. I place my hand over a flower, a stem, anything, and I fill myself up with the colour green directed from my heart. When I feel full, I then radiate that energy back out through my hand into the flower. And that lets them feel our tender, loving energy. But on top of this, there's a lot of new growth that might need something a little bit extra. Protection. And I mean protection against garden critters and slugs and being eaten, but also nutrients so it can grow stronger and be healthier. And one simple thing I have been using recently is eggshell. Eggshells provide nutrients for soil, but also protection. They are great to work with any time of year, but of course this time of year they represent fertility. I grounded the eggshell, making it turn to dust, but also I left a few larger pieces within this and then poured water over this. I left this for a few days under the moonlight and sun to gain energy, but also let the water absorb the eggshell's nutrients. And then watered my herbs and tender stems. If a plant was particularly vulnerable to being eaten, I simply encased it with a circle of larger pieces of eggshell. This hopefully will deter and protect the plant from any harm. A very simple way to add a gift of love to the new life, this Beltane. I not only like to give back during spring, but I also think it's an ideal opportunity to learn more about what is around you. So much is growing 
at the moment. And if I'm honest, I used to have no idea about what was around me. And finding out even the smallest, tiniest sprout can be so rewarding. You might find that sprout has medicinal properties and really good for tea and really good for healing sleep. I don't know, but I have brought out my favourite book, you've seen this before I'm sure, so we're going to go around the woods today and see what flowers we can find. So I was off to see what wonders lied within the woods and the first and most obvious flower was the bluebell. If you find bluebells within a wood, this means it is an ancient wood. They are protected by law and are considered sacred flowers with properties of everlasting love and abundance. Another name for them is fairy flowers and folklore suggests that if you pick a bluebell, a fairy will appear and tut at you. Just over the island stream lies a meadow of beautiful white flowers, so I went over to look at the little darlings. I had to study the flower, how many petals it had, the colour of its pollen, and I eventually identified the plant as greater stitchwort. I found that these were indeed edible and great as a garnish on a salad, but also they are called stitchwort as they can help with stitches. The wood also has plenty of wood sorrel growing. The leaves of this are also edible and taste like sour lemon. But what I didn't know is that these beautiful flowers were yet another sign of an ancient woodland. I then journeyed back to Fairy Island and found so many different flowers growing and it was so much fun identifying them all. I also love to identify birds and butterflies and animal tracks and Beltane is a great time to do this as the forest is so active. However, just a moment later, I saw something in the distance. This beautiful white bluebell. White bluebells in woodland are particularly rare and the odds are 1 in 10,000. I will be coming back to this bluebell, checking up upon it, and each time placing an intention upon it. I then journeyed back, and as I did, I got distracted by something else growing that are like little flowers to me. Moss. I've just had a great idea. I don't really want to take any of the flowers to decorate my altar because they are of ancient woodland and I feel a bit bad taking them away. But the moss here, there's such an abundance of moss growing. I have a great idea to take some and bring it inside and actually plant it at my altar. A spring clean of my altar is needed. And I say spring clean because I haven't actually cleaned my altar since in bulk. <laughs> so, oh, is that a fairy ray? Sun's gone behind the clouds. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be decorating my altar for Beltane and bringing you along with me. You're never too late for a spring clean. That's what I say. At the moment, my altar is full of my gatherings that I have found. It looks okay, but I want to make it look inspiring and make the energy feel cleansed and new again. The first thing I did was add a few drops of lemon essential oil to a bowl of hot water. Lemon is probably the most eco-friendly cleaner there is. It helps the space to breathe properly and it holds no nasty chemicals. But unfortunately, a lot of stains on the bureau were not budging and I couldn't get them off. So it meant I were to give it a whole new lick of paint. I 
Once I had finished painting and was waiting for it to dry, I wanted to make a Beltane air purifier spray. So I looked in my herb garden to see what I could use. And what stood out to me was thyme. Thyme is an antibacterial and purification herb, perfect for this task. I boiled the kettle and mixed the thyme with a few violets from my garden because I thought, why not? They are associated with love, good luck and will help clear the mind. A lovely component to the thyme. I waited for this to get cool and then bottled it up. and sprayed all the surfaces and air around my altar and it really did have a lovely grounding earthy scent. Thyme is also wonderful for enhancing psychic abilities and healing qualities so a little spray of this before you meditate or draw an oracle card will help put you onto the right frequency. After this had dried, I placed everything back, dressing my altar for Beltane. This time of year, I love using crystals such as Adventuring for Health, Fluorite and Amethyst for unlocking and clearing your mind, Jade for love and nurturing. I recently struck gold at the crystal shop as I found a green amethyst. She carries the same qualities as purple amethyst, but in this soft pastel colour that for me represents Beltane at its fullest. If you don't have a particular crystal you want, clear quartz is a good replacement for any of them as it's a great energy magnifier. Now I had finished setting up, it was time to bring in the moss. I placed each piece of moss in a container of soil. The moss should root itself and thrive with plenty of watering. This should now cleanse and purify the air within my space. But also I had to bring in some new tender sprouts from my front garden. It's not Beltane without a few flowers. And my altar was complete. I not only wanted to make over my altar, but I wanted to craft at it. Last year I made this maypole, which is a very important symbol of fertility of Beltane, but this year I am to do something a little different. I'm going to make a pentacle fairy wreath to bring protection to my garden, but also to honour and attract some woodland fairies. I gathered a few silver birch sticks, a dandelion and ribbons and bits and bobs that were all very soft, delicate colours. I snapped the sticks until I had five of similar size. I then arranged them in the most protective symbol of all, the pentagram. And using string, wrapped each point of the star together, but also where the sticks crossed over on the inside. Once this was complete, I covered the string with some of the moss I collected, bringing it to life. I then took each ribbon and wrapped it around the bottom of the pentacle. These will blow in the wind effortlessly, but also reminded me of the maypole ribbons. If a ribbon wasn't long enough, I glued it onto the back of the wreath. And I then added a few shiny objects. I found some earthy green crystals that will glisten in the sun. And the small folk are very much drawn to crystals and shiny objects. Lastly, I used the most airy fairy flower of all, the dandelion. 
I got a small bottle and placed in a few seeds. If you like, you can also place a protection charm on this dandelion. They symbolize air, balance, and happiness. A perfect accompaniment for a fairy wreath. When it was complete, I placed the wreath outside on my fairy tree. I hope the symbolism of this wreath will honour and protect my garden this spring. And above all else, it was such a fun craft to do. So, we have decorated together, crafted together, had a walk together, and now it is time to do a ritual together. And I call this ritual the flower. I mentioned before how we can visualize energy and give it to the trees, give it to the earth to heal. But what if we were to fill it flesh around and absorb the energy they were giving to us the energy that is on the frequency of green which is our heart chakra and I call this ritual the flower because what we are to do is basically think like a flower what has a flower absorbed to become this beautiful state in this spring already well it's absorbed sunlight it's absorbed nutrients from the soil and water so enchanted ones for the next five minutes, you are my flowers. So the first step is taking our shoes off so our feet can lay bare on the ground to absorb the negative ions, but also so we can absorb that frequency and really ground ourselves. Then we are going to drink our water. And if you want, you can place an intention on your water. You can say what you want to heal yourself through, what you want to achieve, what you want to work on that you've currently been working on since in bulk, anything you want really, but that energy you've directed in that water will come back to you and it will help you to grow further. Magical water really, you can do it every time you drink a glass of water. Not only that, there's one more thing. I know I'm doing this in such a beautiful place and you may feel that you need to do that for you too. But if you think about it, enchanted ones, if you look the right way, the whole world is a secret garden. So no matter where you are, you can become that flower and you can bloom this spring. So let us begin. Bring yourself to a comfortable position with your feet firmly planted on the floor. Hold your bottle of water and think about the intention you wish to bestow upon this. Feel the intention penetrating the water and visualize it filling up with a soft green glowing light. This isn't just water anymore. It is your intention. Slowly, when you are ready, start to drink your water. Sip by sip, envisioning its subtle green glow flowing down through your body until you begin to glow bright and green. Drink as much or as little as you would like to. Next, you may choose to lie back into the earth. Feel your eyes gently closing and become aware of your internal self. 
become aware of your heart beating and breathe into this long deep breaths feel your feet that are firmly planted on the floor and once you feel them envision small roots growing from them into the ground gradually growing deeper and stronger rooting you and earthing you helping you to ground yourself once your roots have grown deep within the earth they start to fill up with more of the green glowing light this green slowly glides up the roots and then come through the soles of your feet making its way up your legs up your body and then at your heart Become aware of your heart once more, your green glowing heart. Take some slow deep breaths into this. As you breathe deeper, feel your heart lifting towards the sun, feel it opening up ready to accept the last thing you will need, sunlight. The bright beaming sun above you draws down a huge green ray that flows directly into your heart, flowing through you, filling your veins, and now you are becoming a vibrant green a green so pure of the love and abundance. Feel this energy radiate through you. And now bring your breathing and awareness back to your heart. The energy here is so full and as your heart lie open, a bud starts to appear growing upwards from your heart, radiating green light, its stem rises towards the sun and very slowly the bud unfurls and it starts to bloom. beautiful flower whichever flower has arisen that flower represents you and your journey forward very slowly become aware of what you can feel what you can hear what you can smell what you can taste and now very slowly open your eyes and be aware of what you can see look around you and at the beauty of the world which are now seen by your new fresh eyes you have bloomed Enchanted one, you are that flower and you are beautiful. A blessed Beltane to you all. All my love, Alwyn.